There are a lot of Cartoon Network shows out there that rightly deserve to be called classics. Shows like Codename Kids Next Door, Dexter's Laboratory, Courage the Cowardly Dog, but one of my personal favorites, as well as the personal favorite of most people out there whose parents would actually let them watch it, is Edward, Edward, and also Edward, also known as Ed and Nettie. Ed and Nettie was one of Cartoon Network's biggest hits. It had lovable characters, snappy writing, and a very unique art style. So what if I told you that the creator of Ed and Nettie also happened to make an adult cartoon for MTV? I bet a lot of you are thinking, oh, it's probably something like The Downtowners or Mission Hill, something that's kind of laid back with the same style as Ed and Nettie. But those of you who do know what I'm talking about are going, ah! This here is The Brothers Grunt often considered one of the worst shows of all time, animated or otherwise, and honestly, I'm not sure if I entirely agree. It's not great. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't even really call it good. But to say it's wholly bad? Not exactly. It kind of varies, and we're gonna find out why. Let's take a look at the Brothers Grunt and determine whether or not it really is that bad. So what's this thing about? There's a society of creepy, pale, varicose vein humanoids that love cheese and alcohol called grunts. Most of them don't talk. One of them does, but we don't really know why. This is the Gruntus Poobah, who doesn't really contribute much to the show aside from some lore and some window dressing here and there, but he's an okay character for what little he does. He leads the monastery where the grunts be grunts. They basically just party and eat and drink all the time without having to worry about humans getting in their way. And there are six brothers who are going to be indoctrinated into the fold. Frank, Tony, Bing, Dean, Sammy, and Perry. Each one of them's named after a popular musician like Perry Como, Frank Sinatra, or Bing Crosby. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I'd say it is. That's a nice touch. So the story starts off with Perry being determined as the chosen one. Everyone thinks that he's going to be the great grunt leader that's going to lead them all to success. What specifically that means is unclear. But what is clear is that Perry doesn't want it. This is way too much pressure and he can't stand to have all this mounting on his shoulders so he does the only thing he can think of. He runs away. He joins human life, becomes rich, is a hit with the ladies, and also fights an Irishman over his potato. Yeah, no one really questions why there's this pale, hunchbacked, veiny guy who goes <laughs> instead of talking, but I guess that's the nature of the show, right? But if that's the case, then that begs the question, why did the grunts need to be restricted to the monastery in the first place? Ah, I'm thinking about it too much. In order to prevent the monastery from falling, they need to get Perry back. So the Gruntus Poobah sends Perry's five brothers out into the human world in order to find Perry and bring him back. And that's really it. A lot of the show is just these guys derping around and doing nothing. They just get into slightly weird, mostly loud, and kind of annoying situations that are sometimes kind of gross. Surrealism is the name of the game here. Everything has to be weird, everything has to be wacky, and everything has to be random. It's one of those shows. Not helping is that the grunts don't really have a lot of personality. Perry doesn't really have a personality aside from being blissfully ignorant to his brothers trying to find him. Or maybe he does know and is just trying to avoid them or something, I don't know. But how are our main characters? What are they like? Frank gets angrier than the rest of them do. Dean is the dumbest one and gets distracted a lot. Sammy is a little bit strange in the fact that he is in love with a lamp. Tony's neck is broken so he can't look down and he also has the worst luck. And Bing? Yeah, these guys don't really have a lot to them. I mean, it's kind of hard to develop characters that don't talk. And it's a comedy show, so you wouldn't expect deep, psychologically challenging characters, but still. Every episode feels like the same because aside from one barely explored personality trait, there is no difference between any of these guys. It doesn't matter if Bing or Sammy or Tony is the star of an episode because they all end up being the same. They don't get to bounce off of their environments in unique ways. They don't get to explore different themes. They don't even get to have different types of jokes depending on the grunt. It's only when the grunts team up do we really get to see any kind of unique style to them, and that's why the episodes The Big Crapple and Clean Up on Isle Grunt are my two favorites. In Clean Up on Isle Grunt, 
Dean, the least serious, and Frank, the most serious, team up together to find Perry at a supermarket and hijinks ensue. They cause a lot of trouble, and it's surprisingly funny. The big crapple involves all five brothers getting together trying to find Perry, and for once, they have legitimate personalities. All of the personalities that I just mentioned are fully on display, and they explore them to the best of their ability within the seven minute time frame, and it works quite well. I wouldn't call either of these stellar, but I would definitely say that they're the best gems hidden within the Brothers Grunt. Now I called the show a mixed bag, right? Well, yeah, it most certainly is. The soundtrack's pretty decent, the art style is pretty well done, I gotta say, although the designs are pretty unappealing to look at. But the biggest mixed bag are the episodes themselves. The episodes where the grunts are just kind of derping around doing nothing, I kind of feel like are just a waste of time. Nothing really funny happens, nothing really interesting happens, it's just them making noises and bumbling around being idiots and that's it. But it's the episodes where they really challenge themselves where they manage to get things done well. Let's compare, shall we? There's the episode Make Mine a Grunt where Frank uh, does stuff at a karaoke bar and gets in trouble and then ends up getting thrown in jail. Okay, that was worth my time. Then there's episodes like The Detective where we see this detective guy who is the only one who realizes that the grunts aren't normal people, somehow, and decides to track them down and expose them all Nora Beattie style. The episode details his account of all five brothers that he comes across and the various ways he tries to find them and all the times he fails. It's surprisingly funny and well done. I gotta say, I really like this guy. I wish he showed up a lot more, but sadly, he's only got a couple more appearances. He was a good villain. He was a good foil. And for once, there was a sense of urgency because, here's the thing, a lot of the time in the Brothers Grunt, they don't try to look for Perry at all. The story, which is actually kind of interesting of trying to hunt down this guy who's on the run, is barely ever used. Especially when we have episodes that star Dean or Sammy, it feels like they don't even really care about Perry at all and it's just them getting into trouble for reasons. This show is a lot like League of Super Evil, which I hope to cover someday very soon, wink wink. Those episodes there also have the same problem as the Brothers Grunt. Sometimes I'll have episodes that are really well made. They're snappy, they're funny, and they take full advantage of the premise at hand. But then other times, we have random parodies that show up out of nowhere, or half thought out jokes are just doing the bare minimum. You never really know what you're gonna get. You never really know what the quality is going to be until it's too late. The Brothers Grunt is the same way. And you can't even look at the episode synopses either, because they also don't really tell you what you need to know about the episodes. There's an episode where Bing, who only stars in like one or two shorts, goes to hell. And this one is worth watching, not because of any story, but because of the amazing animation that's on display. Look at this stuff! You can tell the animators had a blast making this thing! Meanwhile, there are other episodes, like Not My Potato, where Perry tries to fight an Irishman for a potato, and all that really happens is they keep saying Not My Potato over and over again and have a staring contest. Yay! I also have to mention the big controversy surrounding the Brothers Grunt. So... Beavis and Butthead, MTV's biggest animated show, was on hiatus at the time when the Brothers Grunt came out. Because the internet was in its infancy and not a lot of people had it, a lot of disgruntled Beavis and Butthead fans out there were led to believe that this was its replacement, and they took to the internet in droves, complaining about this thing, saying that it was just awful, and badmouthing it to anyone who would listen, basically. When in fact this was not the case. Beavis and Butthead was gonna be coming back, but it would be for a little while. They also had a Beavis and Butthead cameo in the Alien episode too, but that only seemed to make things worse. The Brothers Grunt was cancelled basically for every reason I mentioned earlier. The characters were awful, the stories were non-existent, no one thought it was funny, and yeah, some people thought it was gross, but I don't really know. Aside from the ceremony, the very first episode, there weren't really many times where I went, Ugh, that's disgusting. I mean, yeah, the characters are ugly, but they're not that bad. Have you seen 12 Ounce Mouse? But a lot of people thought that, yeah, the show was unappealing as well as unfunny, so no one watched it and the show was canned. 
It's become increasingly difficult to find these episodes because only a certain amount have been posted, there are still a fair few that have been lost. But nobody knows if they actually exist. Yeah, the show is that cryptic. Isn't that sad? Oh boy. So is the Brothers Grunt a bad show? On the whole, I'd say yes, but not that bad. I'd give it like a 4.5 or 4 out of 10, depending on the episode, because there are some good aspects. Like I said, good animation and art style, some episodes are well done, it's just that a majority is just pointless. It's not really disgusting like a lot of people say, it's just boring. And honestly, I think this show could have been done a lot better. Let the grunts actually talk so that way they can have more personality. And try to diversify the humor a little bit so it's not all just ha ha ha, the grunts don't know about human life. Her, 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 her. But as it stands, the brother's grunt isn't great, but it's also not awful. It's kind of middle of the road, like I said, just leaning towards bad. Is it worth your time? Not really. Just look up the five or six episodes that were actually pretty good, and I think that's about it. Don't really bother with the other stuff. It's not worth it. Not worth it at all. I'm really happy that Danny and Tanucci moved on to better things like with Ed and Eddie. And by the way, here's a little Easter egg here. There's a scene in Ed and Eddie where there's this jar that has an eye in it and it's labeled Eye of Grunt. Looks like Danny Antonucci wanted a call back to his biggest failure. Honestly, I wonder how he feels about the show today. Since the internet is vilifying this show and calling it one of the worst adult cartoons ever right alongside the Nut Shack, how does he feel about this? Does he think that the hate is misguided? Does he think that the show was a mistake? Honestly, I'd love to know. Because the Brothers Grunt is bad, but not that bad. So, as we were editing this thing, we ended up finding this quote from Danny Antonucci that explains our last question very well. I still think it's a cool show and I really enjoyed doing it. For what I wanted to do, I thought it was quite successful. That's the key for me. I really dig what I do and it's important for me to like what I do. I don't regret anything, I just look at it as something I did and move on. That's actually a pretty healthy outlook, I gotta say. Not the one I thought we would get, but still, it's good. He likes the show, but he's moved on to bigger and better things, so he doesn't really think about it. And of course, we all know, those bigger and better things happen to be Ed and Nettie. Just in case you didn't figure it out. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? What do you think of the Brothers Grunt? Comment below and let me know, because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Real quick. I'd like to thank our Patreon executive producers, Reziel, Leaf Razor, Azarius, Tanner Kapishki, Michael Bellamy, Whoop Doo, and MD the Dude. If you two would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then consider donating to our Patreon, which has a link in the description below. And now it's time for today's comment of the day, which goes to Bradley Boy. The blooper reel is the stuff of legends that it is. If you guys ever want to see the most hilarious blooper reel ever, Look at Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmases. Very, very strange blooper reel. You will not be disappointed. I promise. Thank you all for watching and. <laughs>